I, I struggled with this a while. It's called funnel timeline. You've got a funnel coming in from this direction. Most people start their planning over here and try to work this way. It's not the right way to plan a business. You want to know where you're going to get to and work back from there because you need to understand what's required for each step as you move backwards this way. And when you do it in that way, you'll see a much different picture of your businesses, I promise you. It's certainly changing the way I'm thinking about my business. So that was how do you get there. Right, once you've got some plans, some real plans with some tasks to do, how do you manage them? Here's a nice simple process, just to make it really easy. There are three people working on this project, Mr. Pink, Mr. Green, and Mrs. Yellow. And they all have tasks. Here are the yellow tasks. Whoops, that we've all decided are needed for the project. And here are the green tasks. Obviously, someone would have written on these tasks what they are and how long they should take and a few other details, perhaps. And here's the pink tasks. Of course, you could do this in your office, on the wall, on a whiteboard, or on a flip chart. And, right, we can start one of these tasks. It's in progress. And Mr. Pink picks up one as well and gets it going. And Mrs. Yellow gets one of those going. Mr. Green decides he can do another one. But then this one's going wonky. The delivery's going to be late. So the project's not going to be on time. This is the exception. And the point of this process is you just focus on the exceptions. Everything up here is under control. It even gets completed. And from this chart, you can see what's happening to your project very clearly. You can see what you've got to do next, what's going on, where the problems are. And it just moves on. And the task moves across. And this one gets dealt with. Delivery's back on track. And in the end, all of the tasks are in progress. And you know, oh, we've got another one there, it's an exception. There's two things left to do. And then we can finish. Is that simpler than Microsoft Project? <laughs> it's a dead easy way to manage projects. Most of us have got quite simple projects to manage. Once you know that they're time, time bound and not a distant dream, um, you can manage them in this sort of way. I'll just give that to you as a little tip. Nice easy way to manage your projects. Right, some of the sources I've used today are in these books that I've got on the table here. Uh, there's the e-myth here if you need to see that. Um, on this bit of paper, which I'll give out to you now, there are, I'm going to split this in three. Make sure that gets to the back. There are the URLs, but if you go to the one URL at the bottom of the page, you'll be able to click on that map that you're currently looking at and go directly to these references. Um, getting things, Six Thinking Hats by Edward de Bono, a great way of resolving issues. When you've got a team of people working on something, it allows you to control meetings very successfully. I've used it many times. Getting things done by David Allen is where this funnel timeline idea is coming from. It's one of the sources for that. And his main thing is you can only do things in certain places. If you characterize your tasks in that way, there are some things you can only do on the phone, some things you can do on the train, some things you can do in the office, some things you can only do at a meeting. If you divide your tasks up that way, you'll find it much easier to manage. And if you get carried away, you can buy Mind Manager and then something called Results Manager, which will manage that whole process for you as a big dashboard. Something that I've used very successfully over the last uh, 15 years now is a little program called Above and Beyond. I use that for my diary. I don't use Outlook. It manages my tasks. I can ascribe value to them. It will sort them out and do all sorts of clever things. It's a free download to try it out. I say have a look, if nothing else. So, very quickly I've gone through how to make your, how to plan for success. 
It's about having this vision of where you want to be in the future, brainstorming it, mapping out all the things that you think you should have in this business to make it have value. Then about, it's about planning backwards from each of the things that you've identified that have value in that business back to today. So if you said intellectual property, what's that intellectual property going to be? How are you going to establish it? What patents do you need? What trademarks? Whatever it is that you need to make that intellectual property have value so you can sell it to someone. This makes it all seem very complicated, doesn't it? Some of you are stunned now, I can see. Perhaps it's just that time of the afternoon. But just a final thought. Your business can be very, very simple. This is the Flower Pots Inn in Cheriton. It's a brighter day. I should have brightened this up a bit. It was taken at sunset. In this pub, you can't use a mobile phone or a credit card or a debit card. It only takes cash. It brews over here in the brewery. It only sells its beer, other people's cider, other people's spirits and wines. It runs a nice curry night on a Wednesday evening. I'll be there tomorrow. What other characteristics does this pub have, Simon? Remind me. Um, dog friendly. It's very dog friendly. It's run by the landlord and landlady. Open fire. It's an open fire. It's a very, very successful pub. In fact, I think he's told me one day he doesn't have a business bank account. <laughs> and surprise, surprise, guess what's parked here and here? A Porsche 911 and a big, uh, it's a Jeep. Big Jeep 4 by her, which is her car. It's a very successful business. Your businesses do not have to be complicated to be successful. But they work hard. They're there every day. They don't go away on holiday. They don't leave the place. I don't think I've ever been there and heard that they've gone on holiday. Uh, there are engines in the cars, yes. They go places. They visit things. Uh, this business will sell. Someone will buy this for a lot of money. It won't go cheaply. As long as it's not whipped, yes. So, good luck in planning your planning the future of your business. Think about the future and work backwards to today. Imagine your Doctor Who in that TARDIS going back in time for each of the steps of your business. But do it in reverse. And you'll think about it entirely differently. Thank you very much.